Uh, welcome to this Sunday morning talk. Yeah, uh, I'm so happy uh, to see new uh, participants uh, or new to my talk. And today's talk is a mixture, yeah, because I'm a psychologist, of course. Yeah, so the, there will be the psychological aspect, and of course, I'm going to link back to the Dharma aspect. Yeah, and in fact, this talk is a recycled talk. I just gave this talk at the Arya Vihara Vesa day on Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, Sister Wailing was there, but she was so busy organizing committee, so she missed my talk. So today, this morning, she came to attend the talk for herself. <laughs> yeah. So, and we had quite a big crowd, I think, uh, that morning, probably at 30, 40, yeah, at our Wesak Day celebration on Wednesday morning. So it's very interesting. Although the same slide, same topic, I think it's going to be very different because different audience ask uh, different questions. Yeah. So before we start off first, yeah, especially the first timer, what would you like to take home uh, from today's learning? Yeah, I can talk non-stop with my slide, yeah, but that's not the point. The point is that uh, you know you guys are here, ah, curious about the talk. So the, any question on your mind? What is it that you would like to ask me? Or, you know, to learn from this topic to take home, and I'll try to tailor to that. Yeah, I don't have to use the slide, in fact, yeah, if it's not there. Yeah, any non, non shy one want to share or not? Because, uh, Buddhist crowd very shy one. Anyone to warm up? Yes, sister, thank you. Mm. Okay. 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 How to do? Okay. Good, now, sister. I'm gonna task you as I go through the slide. Yeah. So please stop me at any of the slide. Yeah. Uh, if it is addressing half of the answer to your question, then please ask more. Okay. Okay. The priority. Okay. Anybody else? Ah, wow. Good, good, good. Yeah, yes, sister. Have to drop the, hab have to drop the habitual uh, uh, Mara of this handphone. Oh, <laughs> okay. Firstly, keep it in your bag now for my talk, the next one hour. <laughs> That's number one. Yeah. At night, please buy a traditional alarm clock. I have my traditional alarm clock. My phone is outside my bedroom oh yes yeah i don't want the transmission even though we can put the aeroplane mode or whatever mode but you see like sister you asked a very important question nowadays people are so glued including you know to bed yeah some actually leave it so beside them yeah and some people the, actually tell me oh you know i'm so disturbed by the notification over midnight and that's the other one yeah please yourself do not send messages to your friends at midnight, even though you cannot sleep. Okay? But I actually have a better answer. Please off the notification for goodness sake. Especially if you're not in emergency services, yeah? Because emergency services now, everybody uses a handphone. So especially, uh, you know, the doctors, the nurses, they got no choice. Yeah? But for us, we are not in emergency services. Off the notification. Or if you have a boss that likes to message you, of course, on the notification during work hours, the off it of the work hours, yeah. I always tell my friends, yeah, can't you all call? Yeah. So I know, yeah, the WhatsApp notification or Facebook notification, whatever it is, sometimes that itself can be a very uh, stressful thing for a lot of people. And especially if you have your phone in your bedroom, yeah. So mine is actually in the in the dining hall downstairs, not even upstairs. Yeah. So the good question. Yeah. So the, we will talk about it again. Yeah. About uh. Yeah. You have a second part of the question, sister. Okay. Oh, you mute. Okay. Good. We want to take the handphone and check and see ah, the news. Ah. Okay. 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 <laughs> that's a that's a very good one. Okay. We will talk about that. Yeah, sister. Thanks. Because I have two more, yes. Ah. Uh, what, what do you mean by on duty? 
uh, line, your sister? I'm currently working in the wastewater operation. Wastewater so, operation. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yes. So you may be called 24 yeah, 7. Yeah, okay, okay. Brother, your question. Mm. Uh, my question is I want to know how you link psychology to digital. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I know that it's related. Right? Mm. I just want to know how. Mm. How it relates. Okay. They yeah, are very easy to answer. Huh? This is my own journey. Yeah. I learned Buddhism like what Brother Bobby introduced us now back in university, my first year in UKM. So the of course I was in psychology department, ma, psychologist today, ma. Yeah, a practicing psychologist. Yeah. Right from the first year, I had the blessing of learning psychology and attending the UKM Buddhist Fellowship. Uh, every Friday, we have Dharma talk, and once a month, uh, we have uh, even night Dharma talk, and that's where we have the great blessings of the late Chief uh, Kesri Dabananda coming frequently to our campus. And then, the, of course, Datu Dr. Vitavi, one of the regular speakers. So that was my kind of background. So I learned two together. I can tell you right from the first year of psychology, or maybe by second year, yeah. Buddha is the greatest psychologist of all time. Period. Yeah? After we learn about the history of psychology, Sigmund Freud, Carl Rogers, all the famous psychologists. I'm going to talk about one of them today. Yeah? So, but I can, uh, with clear conviction and very strong sadda, faith, I can tell you that as a practicing psychologist, even today, 28 years down the road, yeah, to me, Buddha is the greatest psychologist of all time. His teaching is so holistic, so comprehensive. But today, we only have one and a half hour. So the, I will not be able to, to, of course, give you that full link. But I hope to extract and point out what you can do as homework. <laughs> Going back, uh, homework. Yeah, I give homework. Uh, yeah to actually uh, go and investigate more what I say with conviction this morning. Okay, good one. Anybody else? Yeah? Yes, brother. Mm. 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 Ken. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. Good, good. So at least uh, my slides are in accordance <laughs> in what uh, you guys have in mind. Good. Huh? So, okay, before we go into the slide, let's do the first priority of all. Yeah? And the first priority, setting the priority for the spirituality yeah, is practice. Let's do some practice together. Okay? So before we do that, uh, anyone here new to meditation? Ah, okay, okay. Today we have newcomers. Good, don't worry. Yeah, so our guide, very basic. Yeah, uh, mindfulness of the breath and loving kindness practice. Okay, yeah, let's do some practice. That's the first priority. Because sometimes talk, 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 a theory. Yeah, but it's the practice, yeah, that helps us to really embrace, absorb, and internalize uh, the teachings. Okay, let's do some practice. Yeah, I will also sit down. So the, for the, uh, uh, our new uh, Dharma friends uh, who are new to meditation, uh, step number one, what I call mindful posture. Yeah? So and of course, uh, for mindful posture, not necessarily sitting down, lotus posture on the floor, especially uh, I'm in my 50s, the uh, aches and pains are there. No, that's not mindful posture only. Yeah, mindful posture literally means that when we want to invite ourselves for our practice, one of the most important things is to respect our body. Yeah? So sit or even lie down in a comfortable position, as comfortable as you are. And to help you to be comfortable, yeah? one of the important things, still guidance are very important, huh? no slinging hand like that or leg like that. Okay? Because this one actually physiologically, yeah, it will actually impede the smooth breathing. Yeah? So avoid this one, yeah? the, the, this one and the leg. Yeah? 
So have our two feet yeah, uh, grounded on the floor comfortably. Yeah. Ah, another one, uh, our especially at home sofa, right? Wow, so nice. Uh. Okay, this is also not a very helpful posture for meditation. Don't lean back, yeah? Have our back upright but relaxed. Upright means uh, have the back upright, but then check your shoulder, yeah? Not like that. This is stress, <laughs> yeah? But, okay, check the shoulder, yeah? Is my shoulder relaxed, yeah? Have our upper back upright, but the shoulder relaxed. And to help the relaxation, sometimes this is the helpful one, that uh, our two palms or two hands, yeah? perhaps uh, help us to rest on our thigh. Yeah? So this is quite, I think, a comfortable posture for our hand. Yeah? Of course, some of you like the lotus posture, also can. Yeah? So you can do this. But basically, it's an open posture. Yeah? That one is called a closed posture. Huh? This is a slouching. <laughs> right? So no slouching, no closed posture. Yeah? So, but uh, invite your body to be comfortable. Yeah? Respect the body. This is very important. Step one of our mindfulness practice. Yeah? Being aware of how our physical body, yeah? the kaya part, yeah? the Pali word kaya body part, yeah? and inviting yeah? the body first to be in a restful, comfortable position. Be it sitting down on a chair, on the floor, or lying down, or even walking, yeah, mindful walking, yeah, invite our body to be comfortable, okay? Yeah, so that's uh, the part. There's also another part, yeah, our traditional Buddhist meditation, close your eyes, okay? For new beginners, if you don't feel comfortable to close your eyes, don't force yourself. Do this, drop your gaze comfortably, at a spot in front of you so that you don't have to close your eyes but your eyes are not distracted by your friends sitting around you okay just drop your gaze in a comfortable position on the floor in front of you yeah because we take it for granted for some people closing eyes is not comfortable and it is all right you can still meditate without closing your eyes fully especially for beginners slowly slowly Maybe you can, yeah? So that's very important. Okay, let's get into that mindful posture, everyone. And then just invite ourselves to take a few deep breaths, yeah? Sunday morning, waking up early, driving far, far away to come to PGF Center. Or some of you rushing to get the children ready for Sunday school. So now, coming to the class, yeah? Let me just take a few deep breaths. Ah, perhaps just letting out or letting go yeah, of whatever busyness. A few bit breath, three breath, five breath, seven breath, doesn't matter. A few deep breath for yourself. Take a few deep breath until you feel that, ah, I'm sitting right here now in this class, yeah? Our Dhamma class here this morning. You're present. You can feel yourself sitting here with a mindful posture. You are in this class now, yeah? And then, after we have anchored ourselves, let us invite ourselves now to bring our awareness or attention to our breath. For some of us, as we breathe in and out, we notice our breath at our nostril or nose area. Yeah, you can feel the breath there. Or some of us, you know, feel it at the chest or right down at the abdominal area, your tummy area, the rising and the falling. Or, Sister Mian, I don't feel it in the tree location. Don't worry, you are breathing. So, which means that perhaps you can just bring your awareness or your attention to your whole body, 
breathing right now. So mindfulness of the breath means that we pay attention or be aware of our breath wherever our breath is for each of us. Yeah? So let us just do that. Bring our awareness and attention to our breath in a very gentle manner, soft manner. Breathing in and out. In your own rhythm, you don't have to follow my rhythm. Yeah, I'm just providing the guidelines. Breathing in and breathing out. If it helps, perhaps you can put a smile on your face. Usually having a smile will help us to open our heart. And being this gentle, being kind, being loving towards our breath as we breathe in and out. Smiling and feeling gentle, loving, and grateful throughout the breath. Some of us may still have the busyness in the mind or the distracted mind or the wandering mind. Whenever you notice that your attention has run off from the breath and doing the thinking, thinking, yeah, as soon as you notice that, just be gentle with yourself. Just note, ah, wandering mind and guide the mind back to just focus on the breath for the hundredth time, for the thousandth time that you feel distracted or the mind wander away. Just be gentle. Be kind towards the mind, the wandering mind, the nature of the wandering mind. Just guide the mind back to focus on the breath. And just continue focusing on the breath gently, kindly, lovingly. Breathing in and out. Remember to be gentle and kind towards yourself 
when you feel yourself struggling to pay attention or to be aware of the breath, this is part of the practice, noticing the struggle of the mind. Yeah, and how do we soften the mind, be gentle towards the mind, and guide the mind back to focus on the breath, and just continue breathing in and out. Now, slowly and gently, I would like us to shift to the loving-kindness practice. So, those who close your eyes or drop your gaze, continue to do so. And for the loving-kindness practice, yeah, just perhaps you can bring to your mind yeah, any person that you respect, you trust, or friends here in the room that is with you yeah so it can be one person a group of people let us just yeah with our heart open our smile still there let us just wish or radiate loving and kind wishes to them may we be well and happy May we have supportive condition in our life. May we have this spiritual friendship or spiritual community with us. May we be healthy. May we be at ease. May we be kind and gentle towards everybody and ourselves. May we be well and happy. Yeah? I give you a few seconds, perhaps in your own preferred words, your loving and kind wishes. Yeah? So send that to that one person or that group of person with a smile on your face, with your heart feeling warm and open. Just radiate or send loving and kind wishes. May this person or this group of people receive the loving and kind wishes. And the final step of our practice this morning, I would like all of us to just turn inwards. Yeah? Visualize yourself or just sense that I am here. I'm sitting right here right now. And I would like to send loving and kind wishes to myself. For example, may I be comfortable. May I be at ease. May I be well. May I be happy. May I have supportive condition in my life. May I have spiritual friends and community in my life. May I be kind and gentle towards myself. May I have this smile and open heart towards myself. 
May I be well? May I be happy? May I be joyful, contented, and at ease? In your own words, continue to radiate or send loving and kind wishes to yourself right now. One or two more wishes, and then we will end our practice for this morning. Before we end the practice, just drop your loving kindness, radiation or sending. Just reflect to yourself. Ah, this is my practice this morning. Just a silent reflection for yourself. And then slowly and gently, you can wriggle your fingers, wriggle your toes, yeah, to prepare yourself to come back to the class. And those of us who close our eyes, be gentle, yeah, we have lights in the room. So be very slow and gentle to open our eyes. All right. So, especially the newcomers. Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me backwards, huh? Okay, brother. What did you feel or what did you notice? What did you experience in the practice just now? If you are okay to share. Most of the time our minds are so active. No, no. What was the experience of your practice just now? Yeah. Reflect whatever that comes to your mind. What was your practice just now? Yeah, how? We mm. So most of the time you are doing things. Mm. Mm. You are thinking, you are doing, mm. you are there. So now, sit down, mm. try your best to be quiet. Like, you know, mm. For physical, mentally, and all. But most of the time you can't. Uh, physically, yes, because you are sitting down. Uh, mm. You can still the uncomfortable thing. Right. Uh, thinking your mind. Right yeah. Here. That's why I have my guidance, right? The wandering mind right. and coming back. Okay. So overall, the whole this sort of exercise, of course, the longer yes. you yes. learn, you practice, you become better and better. Yes. But ultimately, uh, what is the effect? Okay. Exactly. You have already answered yourself, brother. The effect here is this opportunity to quiet down the mind, right? Yeah, because as lay human being, yeah, especially all of us as lay people, we have our life, our work, and so on and so forth. And in fact, it's all this busyness, yeah, that actually 
yeah, generated a lot of tension, stress, fatigue, so on and so forth, right? So this practice itself, yeah, like just now, you actually felt, ah, yeah, the mind actually quiet down for 10 minutes. I think 7 to 10 minutes I guided, yeah? And how did you feel? You feel, ah, okay, no need to describe words, no words, never mind, but you feel, hmm, yeah? So that itself is an important practice, yeah? Being kind to your breath, being kind to your mind and heart, like my instruction, yeah? Because, you know, we, we actually fall into that busyness all the time. And in all the business, that's where, you know, we feel not balanced, stressed, so and so forth. So putting this as a priority, even as short as three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes, yeah, to allow us each day to have this space. Yeah, I'm just sitting here, you know. Actually, yeah, this is, uh, brother, your question is so common. People do not know how to just at ease, relax and do nothing. Coming back to your question, sister, and now linking back, yeah, because this distraction is so great. You know, having to just sit just now. Let me just uh, ask somebody else to share with us, yeah? How did you feel? What was your experience just now in that 10 minutes? Anyone? Peace, ah! So you were, you were not thinking about your phone, right? You're feeling peaceful. Yeah. Anybody else? How was the experience just now? Mm. Mm. Yeah. You saw, right? I was wiping my tears. Yeah. I also have a lot of joy yeah, during the practice. Yeah. So I actually have tears just now. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, yeah. Anybody else? What was your experience just now? Slow down. Slow down, yeah. Slow down, yeah. Warm. Warm. Okay. Okay. Gratefulness. Yeah. Yeah. Have we ever said thank you, breath, for keeping me alive? No breath, huh? No you, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. We don't even realize that we are breathing. Uh, what more to be grateful and appreciative towards our breath, right? Yeah. So, actually, I finished my talk today. That's the biggest priority. <laughs> right? So, brother and sisters, yeah, setting the priority in spirituality, psychological health and well-being. Of course, I'm going to talk about my slide, right? But I want you to remember, it can be as simple as just the three minutes, the five minutes, the seven minutes, doesn't mm. matter. Yeah, please don't be stuck with that 45 minutes meditation or seven days, 14 days. I am not saying that it's not important. It is very important. But a lot of us in our hectic modern life, if you are able to do this 10 minutes a day, actually that itself is right effort. Right? Just allowing yourself, for goodness sake, maybe in the office, after you come back from lunch, instead of gossiping, talking away, can you just sit quietly for five minutes and do this? Mindfulness of the breath and loving kindness. Yeah? This practice, huh, you can actually lengthen, shorten, right? As it goes, yeah? Yeah? So, allow the mind and heart Rather, like you say, to have this sitting down or like you say, quiet down, you know, the at peace, at ease. Yeah. Just allow the body and mind, actually, both body and mind. Yeah. That instead of busy, busy doing, doing, you are able to be being present. Yeah. With the present moment. Yeah. Yes, brother. I listened to one of the videos of a, a, a doctor, right. like a, like a medical uh, doctor, saying okay. something about uh, meditation. Right. Uh, he mentioned that actually, you know, according to him, apparently, mm. meditation is not really useful. Just like, mm. but it's only useful for people who believe in meditation, or there mm. needs to be a certain level of belief. Mm. But I want to know your perspective mm. as a psychologist. 
there, is there any like scientific uh, explanation that is it actually helpful or not? Is it really what he says? Like yeah. Of the story? Yeah. Okay. Um, be careful of things that you listen on YouTube or whatever else. Okay, be very careful. Okay. Partly his point is correct. Yeah. If you notice my uh, 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 guideline or guidance just now, I was very mindful. Yeah, especially the closing eyes. So I invite those who are not comfortable to close the eyes to open their eyes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Especially, yeah, mindfulness of the breath or breathing meditation, yeah? As you guys have experienced it just now, it looks simple, but the practice is not simple, right? It needs a lot of right effort, right? So therefore, some people, and especially perhaps this doctor from the medical area, and in fact, I'm going to talk about the, the different stages. This is where when some people, they could be medically or mentally or psychologically in a very challenging state, for those people, it is very challenging for them to have meditation focusing on the breath. Okay? Even people from the trauma background, yeah? the closing eyes focusing on the breath can trigger more. Yeah? So, the, of course, this is where yeah, the teacher or the trainer that is guiding the mindfulness of the breath uh, got to be very mindful. It is not suitable for everybody. Right? So, that's one thing. Yeah, so the, you know, we got to be mindful. Some people may not be suitable to practice mindfulness of the breath, maybe at that point. Okay, so and you cannot say that then it is not useful. You cannot say that it's not useful. Yeah, it is useful for some, yeah, uh, partially useful and perhaps not useful depending on the individual condition. Yeah, that will be my answer. Yeah. In fact, medically, you know, I'm going to question this doctor. Actually, medically, deep breathing exercise, yeah, progressive muscle relaxation, the two most popular exercise that's being taught to people with anxiety attack and everything by the doctor in a clinic, yeah, it's breath, what? Right? How can it be not useful? The breath is the, <laughs> like I say, right? No breath, no us, right? Yeah. But it's, of course, how we uh, utilize the practice appropriately. Yeah? And timely. Timely. Yeah? So that's my answer to you. Yeah? Good one. Yeah? To dispel the myth. Yeah? So, and it is very tricky. Sometimes uh, this is where, that's why part of our spiritual practice is really training of the mind. Uh, afterwards, I'm going to talk about uh, the Noble Eightfold Path. Yeah? Talking about right view and right thought. Yeah? And this is where, and especially, I think, for professionals like us, we've got to be even more mindful of the things that we see. Yeah? So we've got to be um, very uh, careful and very clear of the multi-aspects of things. Nothing is like that. Yeah? It's multi-aspect. Yeah? The conditions. Yeah? And being aware of that. Yeah? Yes, brother. Can you say that actually how effective is the meditation? Mm. Mm, good question, brother. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you, brother. Another very important question, yeah? especially today we have our new uh, practitioner. Yeah? Very good question, environment to practice. Yeah? Of course, for beginners, yeah? it will be conducive for you to have this kind of supportive environment to practice, a teacher to guide, yeah? and among yeah? our spiritual friends, all same wavelength, yeah? we want to practice together. So it's very supportive. Yeah? But, yeah? The actual practice, yeah, it is not seeking for this kind of environment. Ah. The, the actual Kung Fu, Kung Fu ah, is no matter how busy it is, ah, you can actually train your mind to focus, to ground, to anchor yourself in that present moment. 
That's why just now the guidance, yeah, if you remember what I say, for the hundred times or the thousand times that your mind get distracted or wander away, yeah, just gently note it and bring it back to the breath and continue focusing on your breathing in and out. We have a lot of newcomers. Myth number one, mindfulness of the breath or meditation on the breath is not for relaxation. Ah. Relaxation is a good side effect. Bonus, bonus. Do not practice meditation so that you feel relaxed. If you have an expectation, that itself is not a practice. Yeah? Mindfulness of the breath, yeah, taught by the Buddha, yeah, is really to go back to the very basic, to train the mind, yeah, to be able to focus, settle down, yeah, because we are in such a busy life right now, right? So it is that. So even yeah, in the sitting, yeah, let's say the environment a bit busy, yeah, but you say, okay, this morning I want to practice. Huh? So you sit for the 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but you were so distracted, yeah, you feel not at ease, you don't feel relaxed. Yeah? But if you have been noticing or if you have been aware that the mind actually wander off, thinking about something, then you saw it, then you say, okay, okay, come back to the breath, go breathe in, breathe out. If you notice this, that itself is mindfulness of the breath. That itself is the training, yeah? training the mind, not to be running or wandering off, but to come back and anchor, yeah? to be at present. That itself is the practice, you know, not the Ah, feeling at ease. Wow, I can focus so well. Of course, that's a good, that's a, we, we like to call it a good practice. Yeah? So, in fact, there's no good or bad practice. Yeah? In mindfulness of the breath or, 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 or meditation, yeah? When you make an effort to practice, that itself is a practice. Yeah? I hope I answer you, brother. It is okay. Yeah? In whatever environment, if you're distracted, yeah, it's that right effort, I will practice. Just for that five minutes, the ten minutes, yeah? But what I would like to learn is that, ah, you know, noticing this mind, yeah, the wandering mind, and reducing the distraction and the wandering, yeah? So just continue to do that, yeah? Of course, the initial part of the practice, especially for beginners. Yeah, you, you, you raise and you have a, a, a continuous question. Mm. Right. Okay. You remember my guidance again? Okay. Different people, different condition. That's why just now my guidance is very clear. Yeah. Some of us notice our breath here at the nostril. Some of us could still be here. Some of us could feel the deep breathing. Yeah, the deep breathing, I was telling the brother, the medical deep breathing, they actually encourage us to uh, breathe all the way down, that you can feel the rising and falling of your tummy, right? So, to, and if we, in fact, remember my instruction, is Sister Mian said this three location, I cannot sense anything, never mind. You know that you're breathing. Yeah, you're sitting here, the whole body is breathing actually. Yeah, so it is all right, yeah, to find, yeah, Whichever, whatever that, the important thing is that you're able to, ah, yeah, be aware and focus on the breath, wherever the breath is, more prominent for you, yeah? It can be in any other location, but as we practice, it will be helpful to at least choose one, yeah? So because it's easier to focus ma, when we get distracted, ma, right? So you can, it doesn't matter which one, yeah? But of course, this is the most common or, or I would say popular practice and of course linking back to medical this is helpful because when we have a deeper breathing it goes all the way down to the abdominal area right that's why you can feel the rising and the falling of your abdominal wall yeah so this is a deeper breathing which is good yeah that means yeah you have you have breath right yeah going in and out so it doesn't matter, especially as you start, no? especially the newcomers just now who raise your hand. Just yeah, try it out. Yeah? Try it out. Good question. Okay? 
Yes. Not possible. Ah, now, okay, okay. You see, without going into the slide, I can uh, already share. Where's my, uh, okay. This is, oh yeah, brother miss it lah. He, where he goes. I'm going to talk about the psychology part now, right? So sister's question, is it possible for the mind not to wonder? Yeah, unless you're arahat, very well cultivated, yeah? For us lah, okay? And uh, I'm a psychologist, right? So from the neuropsychology uh, research, yeah? 2010, I remember when this research came out, yeah? Uh, Gilbert and Killingworth of Harvard University, yeah? They did research on, you know, neuroscientists, right? So, and it was so uh, interesting, they published the result. They say that 47% of the time, human being mind is not focusing on what they are doing at that time. 47% of the time. So as I'm speaking here, some of you are like, itchy la, you know what to eat for lunch la. That's how distracted the mind is from psychology research, 47% of the time. Yeah? And when the 47% of the time that your mind is wandering or distracted, actually the mind is not happy. Compared to if the mind is able to focus on something, yeah, I'm quoting them exactly, yeah, as mundane as commuting on the bus or on the train. Yeah, actually, when you're focused on something and the mind is not wandering, at that point, the mind is happier compared to when the mind is wandering. Ah, okay, yeah. So we don't want to go into neuroscience talk today, but from this research itself is so important, isn't it? The training of the mind. Yeah, training of the mind to be able to focus on what you're doing right now. So does that mean that when they do the training, most of the people actually it, do mean that indirectly they're not happy. Yeah, look, they're distracted. Most people who hold the thing ah. and, you know, you know, then they are Based on this, yes, yes. Most of the whole coach, yes. most of them are unhappy because all the time they are down there. I can tell you, brother, this is where our modern life, yeah, the mind can be so distracted, right? And especially if distracted towards not so healthy things, right? Depending on what you're watching or what you're hearing, yeah, the mind is less happy. Indirectly. Yeah, indirectly. Yeah, because people, people do not know the experience of the stillness of the mind, you know. Yeah, that 10 minutes just now. I don't know, do you all feel at ease at least? Yeah, yeah that stillness, huh? when we have our mind at a very stillness point, yeah, it is also a point that the mind are able to learn. Yeah. So, the, you know, people are pretty mindless if I want to answer you that way, yeah? Doing multiple things at the same time, yeah? And that is really why the world is so stressful. And I think this is where we'll go into my slide. I'll give you a Malaysian statistic. You can see that how serious our condition is. similar to the world, like it's a reflection, but let's look at it, yeah? Oh, before that, nah, okay, okay, I brought the kacang, so I must show you all. <laughs> so, and Sister Mian, you're making pancake, ah? a frying egg. Ah? Okay, continue yeah, with just now the Killingworth and Dilbert uh, you know, uh, research in Harvard. Similarly, there's another famous neuropsychologist. Uh, his name is Dr. Rick Hansen. He has written a book, you know, The Brain of the Buddha. Actually, he's very Buddhist. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of these Guaylo people, they're very practicing Buddhist, if you ask me. Yeah, uh, uh, especially the psychological based uh, scientists. Yeah, so Dr. Rick Hansen, another uh, research, and this was probably published uh, 2010 or even earlier. He says that the human mind behave like a Velcro. This is a Velcro. Yeah, since the, maybe you can't see, right? You all know what is Velcro, right? Dr. Rick Hansen say our human mind behave like a velcro for negative experiences. Meaning that 
when there's negativity, it sticks. That's why you can remember somebody who has scolded you 10 years ago. <laughs> or unresolved conflict, cannot forgive. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, the mind is geared this way yeah, for negativity. Ah, positivity. Why is this here brought a pen? Uh? This is supposed to be a non-stick pen, by the way. Uh? This is a, of course, I can't bring my big non-stick pen, right? So this is a representative, right? So human mind, when we have positive experiences, it tends to slip off like a non-stick pen. So meaning that you cannot remember your positive experiences. It doesn't stick to your mind, whereas the negative ones stick to your mind. How suffering it is, right? Yeah. So, but unfortunately, yeah, the modern human mind behave like that now, huh? Yeah. So, the, this is where, and also, I believe since long, long time ago, that's why Buddha, our teacher, yeah, really has taught us. Yeah. So, I told the brother homework chabut already. No wonder chabut say homework. Yeah. Yeah. We need to put in some effort. Is really learning the, the, the Buddha's uh, uh, teaching. Yeah, he has prescribed us many many different areas, being a leader, as lay household people, as parents, as children, and so on and so forth. Right? Because human being for the longest time. Yeah, this is how our mind behave. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes, according to neuroscientists, yeah. yeah. So is there any difference between the child's mind and the adult's mind? Does the child also have this kind of tendency? Okay, I would say that, of course, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be very uh, naughty and cynical. Uh. Of course, their mind, the child, uh, will be less developed. So hopefully, uh, as they are developing, uh, yeah, since it's not sticking, right, yeah, we can shower them with more positivity. Yeah, that's why parenting. Family life is very important, right? So as we grow older and older, as we accumulate more and more, uh, or oh, sister, why we cannot let go of the phone? It's also this one, you know, this tendency. Yeah, the, 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 the unhealthy habit. It's so hard. Hmm? Make sense? Yeah? So yes, the child might, but to what degree? I, I forgot because the you know like research people a lot, yeah, but for adult memang la ini this is the problem. Mm. Yes. 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 Yeah? So and this is the tricky part, nah? that's why afterwards the statistic nah, will make you feel very sad. Nah? Who is going to influence the young one? We ma adult ma. If we are like that, nah, or we are like that, nah? Yes, yes. Of course it's a combination sister. It is a learned, yeah, based on the environment, the family, the parenting. But of course, as Buddhists, it's also past karma. Yeah? Okay, let me go into my slides. Huh? Oh, I haven't even went into my slide. Huh? Okay, yeah. Okay, oh, okay, now I have to write. Ah, right. Ah, okay. So, wow, I got three to cover. Okay, but don't worry. I think a lot of things that you ask, very good. We are more or less covering. Yeah, I'm just going to take this away. I'm not sitting anymore. Okay, the first part, let's go through the psychological side yeah what is wellness where is well-being understand some of the terminologies second part i'm going to show you this national health morbidity survey 2023 fresh from the oven it came out last thursday uh today sunday not this thursday after we start the thursday before we start okay it came out fresh from the oven this is our national statistic i extracted a few malaysia yeah our malaysia statistic yeah so I'm going to highlight to you a few physical health related to mental health and mental health concern. And of course, the third one, the linking, like what brother said, yeah? looking at spirituality, our, of course, our Buddhist uh, aspect, 
the psychological health and well-being. Yeah, so let's quickly go into it. Huh? Ah, okay, the different terminology. Uh, this is where it's all connected. Okay, so of course, by being in BGF this morning, for us, yeah, this is one of the important priority. Yeah, but in our life, uh, actually, to me, it's this combination. Yeah, if you say, oh, I'm very spiritual, you know, I'll practice, I'll practice, I'll practice, but you are actually not taking care of your physical health, you're neglecting this, then you are not practicing actually. Yeah, so, yeah, it's balancing all this area, especially we are lay people. I'm speaking to a lay group, right? So even as important as your financial well-being, yeah, let's go on by it. Uh, physical well-being, physical health, long, yeah, I can tell you, this is where even us, yeah, many of us struggle with a balanced physical health, yeah, because we are still scrolling our handphone, we took it into the bedroom, yeah, at 11.30, you know, I have friends, uh, sometimes the next morning when I see them sending me WhatsApp at 1.03, uh, I will sound them, what are you doing sending me WhatsApp at 1.03 in the morning? We should be sleeping by 11, 10.30, 11, right? Yeah. Or if we are talking about medically, yeah, we got to even go back 9.30, 10. But I think for us it's impossible. So I'm very realistic, 10.30, 10.30, 11. Realistic. Okay? So physical health, right? Are we eating healthily? Are we exercising enough? Oh, I better stop or else I'll start nagging. Okay? <laughs> physical health. Mental health, yeah. Oh, this is a huge area, yeah. And of course, yeah. Today, uh, I will highlight to you some of the challenges here. Okay, that is uh, uh, the psychological side, yeah. The mental well-being, very specific, yeah. And social well-being is what you know. Social well-being is actually your relationship in life. If you do have ongoing conflict, unresolved, that means your social well-being is unbalanced. Hmm. Career well-being. Every Sunday evening, uh, another work week. Ah, you don't have career well-being. Okay, which means that as lay people, yeah, we need right livelihood, right, to earn our living. But you are very stressed out. You are very unhappy. You are struggling. You are struggling. You don't have career well-being. Eh? Financial well-being. Yes. Ah, but financial well-being a bit subjective, huh? Yeah. So, and this is the part that on a Wednesday at Arya Vihara Vesat Day, we actually invited two uh, financial planner to. We actually have wellness booth, you know, at uh, Arya Vihara Vesat Day. So we have the mental health where I, I was sitting. Then we have legal. We have financial. Yeah. So the, it is important. Many of us may not know how to do financial planning. Yeah, sometimes we wow, 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 work so hard to earn so much money. But then, uh, wow, these two jia lat, uh, the physical and mental health. Yeah, don't know how to balance financial well being, community well being. If you live in Gaza today, yeah, community well being refer to where we are dwelling, where we are living and staying. Yeah with our loved ones, with our family, where do we work, yeah? So community well-being is very important. If you are living in a very dangerous area, yeah, or war zone area, definitely you can't have this line, right? Yeah, that's community well-being. And of course, spiritual well-being will be the most individualized one, yeah? And that will be unique for each of us. And of course, today, we're going to speak from our Buddhist practices. Okay? Yeah. So, different terminology. Yeah? So, just to let you know, uh, well-being is actually the umbrella. Wellness, yeah, sometimes people, hey, well-being, wellness, same or not same. Don't be too worried about that, but I'm just putting here the definition, actually, well-being is a broader holistic dimension. Yeah, whereas wellness refer to the healthy lifestyle. 
Yeah, especially when people talk about wellness, a lot of times it's focusing on the physical health and mental health, right? But actually, we need this whole thing. Okay, okay, I'll pause for a while. Any question on this slide? Yes, brother. So how do you define a normal person or an abnormal person? <laughs> Whereas uh, those mentally unsound, they, they have a certificate, you know, Okay. Okay. Hold on, brother. Uh, I think my following two slides is going to talk about that. We pause, huh? Okay. You see whether I answer you or not. Okay. okay. Good question. Okay. Anything else on this? Okay, huh? okay. Don't worry. I'm a very systematic teacher. Yeah. And also, thank goodness for Ara uh, Vihara Wesat Day. Yeah. I actually compiled a Google folder. So actually, uh, you know, I have a lot of article inside, including the Malaysian National Health Morbidity, the full report, if you want to read the 46 pages, but I extracted a few for us to look at afterwards, right? I am actually going to put my handout, maybe less graphic or less picture, as a, a participant's handout, if you like to read further. Uh, I think I even put one article on Noble Eiffel Pal, yeah? by the great uh, Venerable uh, Rahulas from the book. Um, I even have uh, one e-book, yeah, very specific on meditation uh, by Ajahn Jayasaro, talking about Ajahn Chah's life and the practice of meditation. A lot of things in the folder for you to do homework. <laughs> Not you, everybody. Okay, so we have all that, huh? so you don't worry about taking notes, okay? It's all there provided for you, provided you are hardworking to go and do your revision, okay? Okay, let's uh, do this. By the way, uh, I think a lot of people do not aware, but our Ministry of Health actually do this National Health and Mobility Survey, yeah? Every four years cycle. So, ngam ngam, the seventh cycle since they started is uh, last year, 2023. Of course, uh, it has to be last year collecting data and then published this year. Huh? So, the, uh, this is the one that I'm going to share with you on 2023. The whole document I provided you cover all these topics. Huh? Diabetes, overweight, da 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 da, da smoking, da da da, it's a lot. Huh? Asthma, blah blah blah. Okay, so, but I'm not going to uh, talk about that. I'm going to talk about the uh, mental health. Okay, so you have this whole report in the Google folder. And, okay. Ah, I forgot. <laughs> Mental health, uh, why Sister Mian talk about this? Uh? This is where the physical health is very connected to the mental health. Malaysia are getting fatter. Okay, by 4.3%. Uh, yeah, so it is like going, 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 going. Yeah, so this is unhealthy lifestyle, obesity. Yeah, this is a challenge, right? Uh, another one that I like, so I picked this one to share with you all. 95.1% of adults in Malaysia consume inadequate fruits and vegetables daily. We're supposed to have five units, but we, a lot of us manage to only consume two units. You can go and read the detail. I'm not going into the detail, but this is tricky in terms of physical health, right? And another one, very tricky. A one in five adults do not drink enough plain water every day. How much is the minimum amount? Plus minus, huh? depending on health condition, huh? it can be 1.5 liter to 2 liter to 2.5 liter. Some of us need 2.5. Okay, so depending on your body condition, please work with your doctor. Yeah, depending, some of us may have some some physical uh, condition, yeah? So you may not be able to drink so much or you actually need much more than the two liter, eight glass, uh, as most of us know, yeah? So we have this challenge, okay? Ah, are you active enough? One in three adults in Malaysia are not physically active, yeah? 84% are not active in sport, fitness, or leisure activity. Don't know how to relax. Don't know how to have fun. Yeah? 
So the, we are in trouble. And this is so cute. 84% do not walk or cycle. Yeah, Malaysian drive all the time. Even that three minutes to that uh, 7 Eleven. Yes, park at the door some more. Yes, and go and block people some more. <laughs> yeah, very naughty uh, we all are. Huh? Okay, so this is the not active enough. Yeah, movement. Yeah, so this is very tricky. Are you sleeping enough? Yeah, insufficient sleep is defined as less than seven hours of sleep on an average of 24 hours. I would not dare to ask people to raise their hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you uh, check yourself, right? Yeah, I'm a bit sleepy today because I'm actually less of the seven hours. Yesterday night, I attended one of our Dharma friend's uh, daughter's wedding. And you know, uh, a Chinese wedding, uh, serve, 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 serve. Uh, at 10.15, uh, it's only the fried rice coming out. 10.15, you know, right? I know our Chinese banquet, really, uh, yeah? Yeah. So, the, I actually didn't realize, uh, I promised uh, Brother Bobby on today's talk, I didn't realize uh, I have the wedding dinner the night before. But anyway, yeah. But this is where, yeah, it's very important for us to mind, be mindful, yeah, to, uh, to, to arrange our individual life, family life to have healthiness, right? So, how many of the children nowadays are still awake? at 11, 11.30 and at the mama shop. Tell you, horrible. Yeah, parents bring their young children to hang out at cafe or mama at 11 p.m., 11.30 p.m. just because the parents sleep at 2 a.m. Yeah, sister. Yeah, just now your question about children. So, what, who is the culprit here? Yeah, so... This one, ah, many of us are guilty. Ah. Mm. Medically. Medically. But uh, sister, uh, are we living the life as the monastic life or not? Where we actually, yeah, the, the monastic life, uh, Throughout the day, yeah, they have daily mindfulness practice. They are very mindful in their life. They don't lose their energy like us. Busy here, busy there, kepo here, kepo there. Right? So that's why they need less sleep because their conservation of energy is there throughout the whole day. Lay people, this is lay people, huh? Right? So the, a lot of us are super tired after work. Right and worse, a lot of uh, us work at night. Ah, oh, the put up the laptop, still have to answer the customer at ten p.m. Right, so we are very physically and mentally exhausted. Yeah, so medically, yeah, we actually need the downtime, quiet time. Yeah, seven hours medically. Okay. Yes, of course, yeah, but this is average, huh? Average, huh? Yeah, but uh, if you say that, oh, la, I'm, I'm retired, you know, I'm retired, never mind, la, you know, I stay up, you know, yeah, not healthy too, yeah, it is still good, like I say, to have that range, and of course, like, of course, the, the, the more older population or retired, not rushing to work. So maybe you have five and a half, six hours. It's not three hours and four hours, huh? Staying up at night, yeah? yeah. Malaysian statistic, huh? So you're going to read about yourself. Okay, mental health, trapped in the shadow. Currently, we have 4.6. This is only depression, huh? brother, you asked the question just now, huh? but uh, for mental illness, your question just now is on mental illness, yeah, we have many more categories of diagnosis, but this statistic is only on depression, okay? So, oh yeah, so little, only system here, 4.6, this is only for depression, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> for depression itself, it's 4.6, huh? Malaysia, 15 years and above, huh? Twice the number doubled up from 2019, the last survey, to 2023. Yeah? And about half of 4.6% have 
have thoughts about hurting themselves or being better off dead. Nowadays, it's really... <sighs> I can't even find the word to describe. I just have somebody who texts me that the neighbor, that the daughter, I think 17, 18, took a knife and stabbed herself. Yeah, self-hurting, yeah, suicidal, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so that goes to this statistic. Yeah, child and adolescent. Yeah, so this is below eighteen. Huh? usually we call child is actually child and adolescent below eighteen. Eighteen is adult already. The category lah in Malaysia, right? Eighteen and above is adult. So this is below eighteen. This is the statistic. One in six. Yeah, in Malaysia, experience mental health problem. Yeah, and the burden doubled since twenty nineteen. Yeah, and forty six percent of this statistic have peer problem, difficulty to play with other kids, no friends, bullied by other friends, not liked by other children, cannot get along with adult. Forty six percent, twenty five percent have conduct problem. Yeah, uh, cheating, lying, stealing. Yeah, temper tantrum, disobey instruction, fight with people. Seventeen percent have emotional problem. Yeah, worry, unhappy, nervous, clingy, depressed. Eight percent hyperactive. We always focus on hyperactive because they are so visible. <laughs> yeah, they are super hyperactive. So, oh, yeah, just are hyperactive children. But actually, yeah, we forgot. Ah, these are the bigger group to be worried about. Eh? Parents in this class this morning, you look at this, look at your neighborhood. Yeah? So, hey, we're in big trouble, huh? Okay. You can go and read detail in the, the, the report I'm going to share with you. Okay? But actually, this is not surprising at all. Since June 2020, United Nations has actually warned against global mental health crisis. And this is rightly, usually after the physical threat. During the physical threat, of course, yeah, we focus on the physical defense. Yeah? So that's why during the pandemic, we have the vaccination, we have the prevention, blah, 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 blah. Yeah? But inside, the fear, the anxiety, the loneliness, the depression is suppressed. So once we are now in endemic, we are not out of the woods, by the way. <laughs> we are from pandemic to endemic. Yeah? So of course, the physical threat is reduced so much. So now, the suppression of all this fear, anxiety, depression, all is volcanoing out. Yeah, so that's why the measure last year, memang ngam, our timing very ngam, the national health mobility timing, last year's measurement. Yeah, because next, last year, early last year was we were coming out ma, from the pandemic, right? So, but globally, you know, United Nations has already warned mental health crisis for the next few years, yeah? And uh, nearly 1 billion people is estimated have mental health condition. Most of them lack access to treatment because in most countries, mental health remain most neglected area in health policy. Nothing new, right? And Malaysia, we are very challenged, right? You look at how few professional we have, right? So brother, coming to your question just now, it's impossible for us to assess everybody right so it's very important for education and partly this is what i'm doing today for us to help our immediate family our relatives our neighbors our community and so on and so forth to be aware of mental health challenges right because in malaysia yeah this is the latest data roughly because usually the counting is the year before right so i added a little bit more for, for 2024 so about 500 registered psychiatrists 400 clinical psychologists. So my group of uh, colleagues are very few. No? There's only 400 of us throughout Malaysia. Right? The counsellors have more, about 10,500. And this one, majority are the school counsellor. Out of the 10,500, probably 65% are practicing. 35% are not practicing. Yeah, because we know, right, from the registration. Right? So again, we have very few resources to actually help people professionally professionally so that means there's a lot of untreated yeah situation out there untreated individual yeah so it is not enough huh? this ratio is definitely not enough yeah for our 3.4 34.5 million 
population in Malaysia. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So, brother, uh, you were curious about psychology. This is one of our most famous psychologists of this era. Yeah, Abraham Maslow. He talks about the hierarchy of needs back in 1943, World War II. Yeah. So, bear with me first. Uh. Uh, let me just quickly run through what uh, Abraham Maslow said yeah, in, uh, back in 1943. He says that human being, this is our usual hierarchy of needs as a human being. Yeah, the biggest portion is actually physiological needs. Uh, yeah, red color cannot see. Physiological needs means uh, our breathing, food, water, shelter, clothing, and sleep. Physical health. Right? That's now. This is basic physiological needs. This is the biggest need. Next, followed by safety and security. Health, employment, property, family, social ability, social stability. Yeah? This is the second need. The third need, friendship, family, intimacy, sense of connection. The next one, self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect for others, the need to be a unique individual, an established person. Yeah? Uh, oh, I'm a, you know, an experienced lawyer or I'm an experienced clinical psychologist. Yeah? So that's self-esteem category. Self-actualization. It is talking about morality, creativity, acceptance. Uh, this is the spiritual. This is his word for spirituality. Yeah, if you ask me. Okay? So he says that uh, the focus is, of course, this is the big area. This is the least focus. I challenge you today, brothers and sisters, especially for fellow Buddhists, shouldn't we turn it the other way around? That's why you see my this the pyramid, I shift it the other way around. Hierarchy of needs adapted for 2024, priority for spiritual cultivation. We are eating too much. The some Malaysians are getting fatter. So physiological need should be the other way around. Yeah, the least portion. Right or not? Oh, we busy our mind. Eh, hey, after Sister Mian's talk, uh, shall we go to Klang for Bakute or not? <laughs> or better still, go Banting. Or go to uh, where, huh? that Law Mi place, uh, whatever, blah. You know? Yeah. Okay? Okay, uh? correct, huh? So, of course, that's why I'm twisting the whole thing. Yeah, because the spiritual cultivation, yeah, yeah, to me, lah. Yeah, especially in our modern world, should be the biggest part of our focus or our priority. Yeah? And uh, especially, you know, this part, yeah, actually there is already. Ah, this one is still tricky. Huh? These two are, are, are of course overlap. Nah? It's very tricky. You know uh, why, uh, sister, maybe take back to your <coughs> question, right? The imbalance of work life balance, right? So therefore, the 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 popular corporate word, right? Work-life balance, stress management, right? It is actually here, which is correct. Because a lot of people still struggle within these two areas, the, the needs of belongingness, love, and self-esteem. So that's why you always have that struggle with the work-life balance. Oh, you need to take care of your family, but you need to build your career. I need to climb my uh, career ladder, right? So yes, this middle portion, yeah, many people are struggling with this, right? So, the, and of course, uh, you know, this part, lagi la, neglected la, yeah? But I see uh, quite a number of retirees, yeah, in this session. So, if we are free from here, don't be stuck here. This is craving and attachment, huh? yeah? Yeah, please focus on this. The spiritual cultivation. More time on this. Yeah? Because actually, this spiritual cultivation part, yeah, this part of the human needs, yeah, is so important. It is actually helping you to build your readiness and resilience towards crisis. Yeah? In our modern time. Maslow, uh, 1943, World War II, right? You know why he's... Pyramid is this way. Of course, World War II, the basic is safety, security, and physiological need. No food, war. Right? So the basic human need for survival, 
is definitely that too. But now, uh, flip the time. Uh, we are in the time. I do not know. Are we in World War Three? Maybe the World War Three is very different, very subtle with Cold War, economic war, political war. Yeah, I do not know. Uh, that make it even more challenging. So therefore, maybe this focus will not work now for our World War Three. It's probably this focus. How do we treasure our life? Yeah, train this mind. Yeah, to have the stability. Yeah, to face the adversity of our world today. Okay, so I want you to go back and think about this. Yeah, our hierarchy of needs now. Okay, okay, oh, like that. Ah, okay. I need to do. Uh, this is where I'm making a, a strong statement, but I have my clarification. <laughs> yeah, partly answering your question, uh, brother, just now about mental illness. Yeah, very important. Yeah, all our Buddhist practices are all important but remember it's not a cure all especially for complicated issue i'm going to talk about it in the next slide but please remember sometimes there are individuals who need to see a psychiatrist but instead we all say never mind lah. every sunday go bgf go offer dana of course go bgf offer dana but you still need to see a psychiatrist okay that's my point in our Buddhist circle, I can tell you the awareness is still lacking. Yeah? About the importance of really some people need professional help. Yeah? So this is where my second statement. If you feel we cannot cope with the stresses, mood swing, and many more difficult issues in your life, please seek help. And this is where in my that shared folder, yeah, I have the listing of government and community free helplines. Yeah, and of course, school, college, and university, they have their counseling services. Or, of course, the, the 500, 400, and 10,500 medical and mental health professionals available in Malaysia for in depth consultation and treatment without delay or hesitation. Yeah, hopefully, this is important yeah, before this situation gets worse. Okay? This is where how to prioritize. Yeah? So, brother, now I'm answering your question. There are three categories. I put it very simple for us to understand. Yeah? An individual situation. Yeah? If the individual is probably okay, yeah? sometimes stressed, but coping, uh, okay, la, you know. Yeah? So, the, this is where, of course, the category of uh, 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 area that the person needs is called prevention. Coming to BGF for Sister Mian's talk, then we offer Dana. Yes, wellness and resilience side. Yeah, because you are still okay. Right? So, uh, all the prevention activity, or you know, uh, we go for Dharma talk, we go for Sutta class, yeah, or we go for Alzheimer disease awareness talk. Yeah, dementia talk, yeah, caregiver uh, uh, challenges talk. Don't only go for Dharma talk. Uh. This area of talk is also very important, uh, the physical and mental health area. Yeah? So this is prevention. But when somebody is really in the category of stress or distress, uh, or the, the getting more serious is disorder or burnout. Disorder means, uh, brother, it is already a very serious condition. The person's daily con uh, functioning is gone. Yeah, not able to go to school, not able to go to work. Yeah, the daily function. That's our daily functioning, isn't it? Whichever role that we are in now, right? Either we're student going to school or we are working, right? In a lay life, right? Or even retire. A retired person also have a daily activity, right? So when your daily activity is affected you cannot function yeah it's actually this category you know it's very serious if you are not able to function maybe the person is very depressed very anxious yeah we have this uh it's japanese term oh i can't even pronounce it he go 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 it's a japanese term that we are struggling to treat people has been the and it's made worse during the pandemic 
there are people who are isolating themselves for many years in the room or in the house and cannot even go out and function. Right? Yeah. So that one is disorder. Yeah. Or you are so burned out, you become so negative, cynical, and uh, you know, you lose hope, you can't uh, perform as a person, yeah, emotional burnout, physical burnout, yeah. Uh, that one you need treatment, yeah. So, in terms of the professional, uh, so for psychiatrists and clinical psychologists, we work at this area. For counsellor, they work in this area. That's the difference. Sometimes people say, hey, I don't want to see psychiatrists. Ah. And then people say, I'm mad, I'm mental illness. But the person's symptom is so serious. Never mind, lah. I go and talk to BGF counseling unit. They will tell you to go and see psychiatrists, I tell you. <laughs> we have trained them. Hello, this is BGF counseling unit past uh, coordinator. Yeah, I was serving as the main coordinator for eight years, a ah, long, long time ago when I was younger. Yeah, so. so it's very different now. Huh? The free helpline cannot help here. If you call them, yes, they can point you hopefully to good resources for treatment, but they cannot treat. Yeah, if it's so serious. Yeah. So the remember, yeah, this category. So did I answer your question? Yeah. Anybody else? This is very important. Yeah, because many of us in the community yeah, try to do this. Oh, corporate world, by the way, I do a lot of corporate training for my work. Actually, my expertise is workplace. Yeah, I actually have been in the workplace area for many years. Yeah, I do a lot of managerial coaching, yeah, handling difficult employee, doing corporate training. Actually, that's my forte. As a clinical psychologist, I'm the weird one. I'm not working in the hospital or clinic. I work in the corporate world, actually. Yeah, so that's my forte. I've actually seen very frustrating organization or company. Yeah, it's very clear that department now got somebody that need treatment. But now we just organize team building lah. We organize one day training. Miss Lo, can you do for us a one day stress management now? Help my whole department to be not stressed. I always tell the requesting manager impossible. <laughs> If you have somebody that's very negative and very toxic, everybody is so affected. How can we do a stress management and count them everything? We have to tackle that fella. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, Miss Lo, can you do a training for us to motivate our employee, you know? These are call center people, you know? They are very stressed out, you know? And people are leaving the job, you know? Yeah? Can you do a motivational training? I told them, no. Let me know what is happening in your policy, your uh, reward system. If you are not paying people enough, you are overloading people. Of course, people are leaving the job. Yeah, but people are using this one to run away to face their problem. Whereas the problem is actually actually these two areas. Yeah, more in-depth intervention. Yeah. You will see this. Some of you are in the working world. Yeah, I can see you nodding your head. What I'm saying, true, right? Yeah. So uh, as now a very seasoned consultant, uh, I dare to speak up to the HR director, right? Seasoned ready. Last time, ah, okay, okay, I do a stress management one day training for you lah. But over the years, I know it's not effective anymore. Yeah. The managers respond uh, when I say no uh. Okay, that's where, of course, yeah, I also have the skill. So I actually consult, do consultation with them, help them to assess what are the presenting problem, yeah, especially to actually identify are there problematic individual first or not, and why are we doing the whole team building for what, right? So because I'm a psychologist, so I know how to assess. So I help them. So some. Sometimes end up is actually doing come more of the managerial coaching when that ma manager is actually the one mara mara. That's why the whole department is so stressed out, walking on tiptoe, right? Instead of doing a stress management department one day training, everybody ha 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 have a good time, right? Training, right? Have a good time, right? But go back, you still have to face that fellow tomorrow, <laughs> right? 
right? Uh, that's why I'm a very seasoned uh, consultant and trainer, so I can speak like that. Yeah? So, but my point is that that's why you know, we are not really prioritizing prevention, intervention, and treatment. Yeah? Come back to the Buddhist circle. Uh. Okay, uh, just watch what I say, right? Uh, I hope you applied it for our Buddhist circle too. Yes, brother. Ah, okay. Brother Bobby, we need another talk. <laughs> right? Okay, yes, that's a good question. Yes. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, very briefly, of course, I can't go into the detail. Yeah? Assess the four area of yourself. Your physical symptom, your thoughts, your feeling or emotion, yeah, and your behavior. If these four areas, yeah, is challenging. I just give you an example, and uh, maybe more neutrally, I take an employee example. This employee has been visiting the GP, the panel clinic, many many times for the past few months. Sakit sini, sakit sana, da 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 da. Uh, the doctor okay, give MC two days, go with some medication, or the flu is gone, the fever has come down, blah blah blah. But it's ongoing, yeah. Or this person. Coming to work every morning like a zombie. Hey, it's a very clear symptom. The person is not sleeping. Physical symptom, right? Or, you know, frequently stomach ache, back ache, shoulder ache. Physical symptom. Okay? Thoughts. Cannot make decision. That's a very prominent one. Yeah? Forgetful. The thought category. Yeah, or you know, having a lot of uh, you know, uh, uncertainty kind of thinking, cannot do this, cannot do that. Thought, so negative thoughts, negative feelings, same. Yeah, feeling uh, you know, restless or feeling fearful, feeling anxious, feeling lonely, down, feeling discouraged, no motivation, feeling behavior. Yeah, this is where ah, the most classic symptom of behavior procrastination that's why no action behavior is action right so if you procrastinate you cannot do the task it's a problem it's a symptom already very strong symptom right or you are always jittery walking on your toes huh? hyper vigilant we call it hyper vigilant behavior yeah, so very quickly, I give you some of the major symptoms of the four categories. If one individual present, and a lot of times uh, it doesn't come one, you know, actually two or three, or sometimes it two empat empat lah, got one. Yeah, when a person is very stressful, you can see this symptom in them. Okay, very quickly. Yeah. Oh. I think most of us as we age, mm. I'm beginning to feel a lot of these little, little things. Mm. Right? Yeah. Sister, thank I mean, you. I won't Brother Bobby, we really need another talk huh? because this is really dear to my heart. Yeah? I'm a main carer for my elderly mother. My mom is 84. Yeah? Actually, we are very challenged with uh, you know, aging. Yeah? And I'm in my 50s, right? My mom in my 80s. So, uh, you know, this is where I feel that our this generation, the 50s to the 80s, yeah? where the 50s, are very stressed out, but we need to take care of the 80s, <laughs> right? So there are a lot of anxiety and stress, yeah, for carer and for the recipients of the caring, right? So, and also another one, that's why just now my pyramid, why I flip it so that the self-actualization or the spiritual cultivation has to be increased because you know why? A lot of uh, people as they age, yeah, fear of death is coming in yeah the fear of uncertainty yeah so the fear anxiety worry restlessness are huh? all same family of emotion yeah. yeah so so that's another area hmm? hey ah eh? ah ah now come ah okay 
And of the system here, talk, 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 so many slides. Yeah. Let's go back to very basic. Uh. And some of you, if you have the thoughts, oh, I've attended no, 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 Four Noble Truth Path, a uh, Noble Eightfold Path talk, attend and attend and attend and attend and attend and attend. Okay, go back to the very basic. Some of us say, oh, yeah, Sister Mian, oh, your Sutta study very difficult. Oh. Sutta, oh, yeah, the language, huh? I read, 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 I lost already. Okay, I understand. It's not that I also struggle with Sutta study, right? So, but as today's homework, I promise you homework, huh? Yeah. So, I'm not going to talk about Four Noble Truths, but I invite you to spend one hour, 40 minutes to go and uh, view this YouTube and listen to Sister Sylvia Bay talk on Four Noble Truths in plain English. I really enjoy her talk so much. She is uh, very, you know, uh, 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 talk about jokes and everything too. But uh, I find that uh, her recent talk in Singapore, this is very recent, yeah, this uh, April in Singapore, Sister Sylvia is actually one of our Buddhist well-known scholar. She's a Singaporean, yeah. So, so she's actually a very renowned uh, Buddhist scholar, yeah, Sister Sylvia B. So go and listen to her talk on Four Noble Truths. Do we really understand Four Noble Truths or not? Yeah, the first truth of suffering itself. Yeah, of course, the first one is yeah, the truth of dukkha, the truth of suffering. Yeah. But the second one, uh, the truth of the cause of the dukkha. Uh, coming back to this one, uh, already no uh, negative, uh, but still, uh, what is the cause of suffering? Craving, tanha. How do we learn to manage our tanha? Sorry, uh, Sister Sohun, I could uh, example. Uh, our tanha towards our mobile phone. Yeah? It's an addiction uh, in our psychology world. Uh, it's actually a huge addiction that we are struggling to treat, be it children or adult. The addiction towards gadgets or digital-based uh, gadgets, right? It's really back to this one. Yeah? Do we truly understand craving? Yeah? So the truth of the end of dukkha. Buddha gave us this prescription. There is an end. Yeah? And someone gave us path. Yeah, there's a path to end this cycle. Yeah? But yet we are not following the path. Okay? Go and listen to her talk. Uh, she actually she also actually not in detail, but she also, of course, brought in the noble evil path, which is the fourth noble truth. Yeah? So your homework is, please go and listen to this talk. I urge you. I've listened to it twice. Yeah, it's so uh, encouraging, so inspiring yeah, for me. Yeah, but I want to share this with you. Go and listen to it again. Next, Noble Eiffel Path, right? So, uh, and this one, yeah, if you want very detailed study and not so difficult English, yeah, and access to insight is a very wonderful website. Yeah, a lot of uh, Buddhist uh, studies and uh, a lot of the write-up, uh, the teachings are actually, of course, translated from the Sutta from Bhikkhu Bodhi, one of our also very renowned yeah, Buddhist monk, teacher, meditator, scholar. Yeah, Bhikkhu Bodhi. Yeah, access to insight. Yeah? So go and search. Uh, and you can, actually, you can use this and you can go straight to the Noble Eightfold Path. You can go in in detail one by one, yeah, and a uh, noble evil path, uh, no shortcut. You see the wheel, right? So I purposely put the wheel, right? You cannot say, as hey, Sister Mian, I will start first, uh -huh. I will start with, uh, you know, right action. No, 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 like that. You, you, what, we, we practice it in the wheel. That means it, that eight, the eight path. Yeah, so, so it's important to understand noble evil path. And actually, we already practiced just now, you know, in our 10 minutes practice. My next slide will show you. What I'm saying is that each of these Noble Eiffel Path, the three areas of training, wisdom training, yeah, uh, conduct training, yeah, moral conduct or ethical conduct, and mind or mental development, 
all these three goes together. Okay, so cannot pick and choose. Yeah, but you'll be surprised. Once you start practicing, yeah, all the eight will come together. Yeah, I want to share this with you. Yeah, and this one is because I read it in the Ajahn Jaya Saru book. Yeah, it's from chapter six. Yeah, page three to two. Yeah, talking about the heart of the matter meditation teaching. Yeah, and this is what I extracted from the book. In mindfulness of the breath, the meditator could fulfill the whole of the threefold training. Yeah, the sila, the samadhi, and the panya. Right, following the noble eightfold path. Yeah, the most excellent of all paths that leads towards nibbana, and that practice itself. Yeah, this is how uh, I know Ajahn explain. Yeah, when we actually, yeah, compel or incline the mind or direct the mind to focus on the breath. Yeah, that means when the mind wander away. Yeah, the the gentleness I talk about. Don't fight with it. Yeah, come back. Just come back and focus on the breath. This this itself is sila. It's a moral conduct. You're not struggling and fighting with your mind. Yeah, but the mind does that anyway. So every time you direct the mind back to focus on the breath, this practice is a sila practice. You are on the noble eightfold path. Hmm? This is from the meditative perspective. Huh? So compelling the mind to focus on the breath huh? is actually a moral conduct. Yeah? It's a good behavior, right? It's a good practice, right? And unremitting focus on the breath. Yeah? That means uh, very focused, yeah? able to focus on the breath, bringing the mind to a state of lucid calm, the stillness I talk about. This itself is mental development under this samadhi path or samadhi training. And as we do this practice, yeah, you will actually realize yeah, you actually let go of your attachment through your contemplation on the focused breath because you know as you focus on the breath, yeah, it's impermanent, unstable. Yeah? The breath itself is there for us. Yeah? It's a very selfless practice. This itself will give you some wisdom. The wisdom here is that you cannot force the mind. Right? Like I say, you know, do you understand? The mind, in fact, sometimes you go calm, still there and go, ooh. <laughs> right? So hopefully, this is really that understanding of letting go of impermanence. So Ajahn place it under the wisdom training. Such beautiful, isn't it? Right? So your 10 minutes, huh? You're practicing noble evil path. Yeah, this is me lah, trying to encourage you to practice now. Yeah, but let's come back to. Eh, tak boleh patah balik mana? Ah, okay. So the we are lay people lah. I always start with this one. Very important, right? Watch this one because we are very challenged in this area. Firstly. Are you in the right livelihood? This is career well-being, community well-being, right? Right? Yeah, the right livelihood, the right action. Let's say you are in sales and marketing and you are in company that your bosses want you to hide certain facts of your product to the customer or consumer. Yeah? And you, as the sales and marketing manager, have to do that. You struggle with this, right? Yeah, so you're not on the path. That's why you're so stressed out. <laughs> work, work, no life balance. Right? As simple as that. Right? Yeah, and of course, yeah, the bosses themselves, this area is very challenged, right? Their view and intention. Mm. Yeah, so if we flip it to our, you know, uh, uh, lay life, yeah. And if your this part, your samadhi part, yeah, you don't practice your stabling the mind, anchoring the mind. Once the boss ah, uh, you, trigger you, you'll be all stressed, kalangkabot, chaotic, because we don't have this one. 
if you are steady one, ah, uh, uh, meditator, very diligent meditator. Hey, oh, these people gossip, ah. Uh. Currently, my job or my department like that, ah, uh, huh? But if you are very strong here, perhaps you can survive, huh? Right? Yeah, you don't join the gossip. You know how to, you know, withdraw yourself uh, wisely. Yeah, don't associate with the fools, right? Yeah, but you need this and this. Yeah, you see, all are interconnected. Eh? Nobody for path. Hey, I talk, 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 and I say, wow, 11 40 already. Yeah, wow, I better go faster, baby. Okay, uh, okay, uh, so homework, homework. I'm uh, gonna go, 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 go access to inside. Okay, go and read uh, what Biku Bodhi has uh, lined up for us in plain English. Yeah. Okay, uh, of course, I have some of this yeah, in the slide. Yeah? So actually, uh, the sila practice uh, to me, uh, yeah, this is especially right speech and right action. Uh, it's actually the five precepts that we are chanting all the time. Yeah? If you actually observe our five precepts, actually technically, you are already practicing right speech and right action. Yeah? And hopefully, this is also in included, right? The life livelihood. Yeah? So, so I have the slides, uh, very brief. Yeah, and uh, I even highlight right effort. Yeah, as one slide. Yeah, so right effort is also another out of the noble eightfold path. Uh, this path is also equally important. Let's quickly run through it now. Uh. Right effort refer to the energetic will of the mind to do these four things. Uh. first to prevent negative or bad and unwholesome state of mind from arising. So please don't go and gossip and associate with the fool. <laughs> That's how you prevent, right? Yeah, I'm being very, yeah, 11.30 already, yeah. So, okay, but you know, true, right, what I say, right? All, all, yeah, the, the, the negative, bad and unwholesome has already arisen, yeah. So this is where we must put in effort to eliminate or reduce, yeah, the negative, bad or unwholesome state of mind that has already arisen. So this is the negative one, the pair. Yeah? This is the pair to handle negative or unwholesome. This is the pair. Ah, there, this one. Nah, 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 nah. This one. Probably Rick Hansen come from here. Right? The positive one. This is a positive pair. To produce, to cause, to arise. Positive, good and wholesome state of mind that has not arisen. So that's why we want to practice radiation of loving kindness. Yeah, this is this, right? Oh, you know, wow, just now, uh, sister, you say, wow, when I practice the loving kindness practice, I feel so joyful. Yeah, with the joy in your heart coming out of the practice, yeah, go and share it with other people, yeah, to develop or enhance further the positive, good, or wholesome state of mind that has already arisen. So if you are, you know, meditating a lot, you are actually really, you know. That's why this is under the mental or the mind development samadhi uh, path, right? Out of the noble evil path. Right effort. Starts with right effort before even you talk about right concentration and right mindfulness. Okay? okay. So I want to stress on this. So, uh, okay. So this is almost to the end already. Yeah? For mindfulness or meditative practice. I told you, right? A lot of homework, ma. Ah, eh, please go and attend Mahasati Patana Sutta class. Okay, the four foundation of mindfulness. Okay, you have, you're going to have the slide. I mean, I'm going to give you QR code to download. <laughs> this is a million QR code, <laughs> right? So, and uh, of course, yeah, in terms of all of us, yeah, one of the biggest challenges is managing emotion, right? And we have, that's why I say Buddha is the greatest psychologist, all already given one, yeah? So this is training of the mind. This is training of the feeling or emotion. The four Brahma Viharas. Yeah? How do we practice Upeka, Mudita, Karuna, Metta? Yeah? And especially, we have these four pairs of challenging emotion in our life. Agree or not? These four pairs. Yeah? Yeah. So of course, there are, there are many more. But these are the frequent, usual, universal that people struggle with. Okay? So, ah, I will read this later on. Oh, I better read this now. Okay. For me, uh, I love this aspiration quotation. And this is from the book, 
page 125 from the Daily Buddhist Devotion by our late uh, Venerable K. Sri Dhammananda is a maroon colour, this small book. Yeah, it was published, what, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Yeah, I feel that this uh, aspiration recitation is so inspiring. Yeah, I recite this a lot of time. I even have a slide in the Google folder that you can download and put on your phone as a, a wallpaper if you like this uh, aspiration. I'm all prepared, <laughs> right? So, and uh, this is where I feel that each of these paragraphs is so full of Dharma. Let me read to you as one of our ending sharing uh, for today's, uh, this morning talk, right? If I have strayed from the true path, may I never or try not to do so again. If I've carelessly hurt someone today by word or by deed, may I be more mindful the next time. O oh Buddha, dear enlightened one, help me to set my heart right. May my action reflect your love and compassion. I shall strive or I shall practice to cleanse my heart from hate and envy and live in harmony with all people. I shall be close to the Dharma in good as well as in difficult times. I know that should the moment come for me to leave the world, I shall do so without fear or regret because I leave the world a better person than when I came into it. Whatever wrong someone may do to me, may I be compassionate and forgive and bear no hatred in my heart. I shall bear in mind to be grateful for the acts of love and consideration shown to me no matter how small they appear to be. For those I love and those who love me, may this life be a blessing and a source of happiness to all beings. Right? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I find that each paragraph is so rich with Buddha's teaching. Yeah? Our late chief is really, of course, Late Chief, for those of you uh, who have known him, I'm so blessed, right? I have heard him talk when he was alive from, from a university student, right? So, yeah, this is his word, yeah? yeah? How he compiled this is so beautiful, right? So, this is the aspiration. If uh, all forgotten, uh, your sister Mian got a lot of slides, huh? I would suggest just download this slide and recite. Yeah, every night before you go to bed, yeah, maybe it will inspire you to practice Dharma, right? So this slide, ada lagi ya, huh? uh, Okay, this is the Google folder that I have listed all the resources, including the slides for this morning talk, the aspiration uh, uh, page, right? So the you know access the folder, uh, have all the information, yeah. We did this for the Vesak day, for the devotees. So I'm going to actually share this around. I think uh, since I've done work compiling this, yeah, might as well share. Uh, also with the help of, of course, a group of young uh, Buddhist devotees. Yeah, so the uh, two lawyers, two financial planner, and one corporate wellness person, all of them are brothers and sisters uh, in their early 40s. That's why I call them the young leaders. Yeah, so I got them uh, together. That's why we did this uh, wellness uh, initiative or wellness booth during uh, the Wesak Day uh, at Manara Ken. Yeah, so we compile all this information. Yeah, so hopefully people need information, right? Yeah, so the, I hope that this information, share it with your friends. Yeah, no issue. Share it with your neighbors, friends. Yeah, hopefully it can benefit them. Okay. Lastly, everybody scan ready or not? Got one more QR code. Scan ready, huh? Okay. Last slide for today. Eh. Ah, okay. I am a psychologist and uh, this is where just now I talk about prevention, intervention or treatment. Yeah, this is from Ministry of Health. Huh? This is a mental health screening using this questionnaire, 21 item. This DAS21 actually stands for depression, anxiety, and stress scale, 21 item. It's a brief questionnaire which is used for screening stress, anxiety, and depression symptoms. 
Yeah. So the, it is uh, this. Uh, this is this was set up by Ministry of Health. So uh, this app is quite friendly. You know, you QR code it, then you answer. You you can answer it at home. Yeah. Maybe store the QR code or whatever, right? Uh, and uh, once you finish answering the twenty one items, you hit submit. Then the result is going to generate out. Yeah, your level of stress, your level of anxiety, your level of depression. They even have the next button, especially they were advised, yeah, if you have moderate to severe stress, anxiety or depression, please call Mentari Clinic. So actually, government services are available. We do have the government mental health clinic. It's called Mentari Clinic. Yeah, uh, the last few years, uh, they have managed to set up in major places in Malaysia. If you go back to my dad, the other folder, one of the listing, we will have the Mentari Clinic contacts in different states. Kedah, Penang and all those things. So all the resources are there. So please feel free to share it with your friends, relatives and so on and so forth. Yeah? So this is to answer uh, this questionnaire if you wish to, yeah, to briefly screen your own stress, anxiety and depression. So, uh, I think the next slide is, thank you. And we have done Q&A right from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, still Q&A. Yeah? If some of you need to rush off, of course, go ahead. So, if you still have a question, yeah, I think I can still, another five minutes or so, we can take Q&A. Thank okay. you, Sister Brother, I have a question. Uh, speaking of some slides, uh, uh -huh. where you put a note there is uh, what proprietary information. <coughs> uh. I just take for my own reference. Uh. Yes, very good, brother. And right? after that, yeah. delete it. Yes, no problem. Okay. I'm a corporate trainer. I'm very used to do this kind of things because corporate trainer, right? We have to protect the slides that we use, right? So I, we always put, you know, proprietary information. That means this slide was created by me and right? So if you want to use, you better ask my permission, right? And especially corporate world, uh, sometimes they reuse people's uh, material without acknowledging. Actually, you can use, no problem, but please acknowledge. Yeah, because we work hard in order to compile all this, right? So, but of course, for Buddhist group, no problem. The re I'm even giving you the handout yeah, in the Google folder. So, so but very sharp, huh, brother, you notice my that statement. Huh? Yeah, sadhu. Yeah. yeah, brother? When do we go into a psychologist? When do we go into a psychiatrist? Very and good when, question. Where is the starting point? Okay, okay. Yeah? If... Like I say, a person, uh, the individual, yeah, the symptom that all I have highlighted, very, very alarming. Yeah? Or your DAS 21, yeah? severe, severe, severe. Okay? Definitely, you need to see a clinical psychologist or psychiatrist. Some counsellors are not trained to handle the more severe or what we call the clinical symptom. Yeah? So the counsellor, one of the simple ways that we differentiate the professional, psychiatrists and clinical psychologists, we will actually go into treatment already. Yeah? Uh, okay, psychiatrists are medical doctor and then they study mental illness in depth. Psychologists, we are not medical doctor, but uh, we actually study psychology in depthly yeah and clinical psychology not only we study psychology field but we specialize in clinical area or what we call a uh, serious area mental illness trauma crisis yeah so because of the word clinical what we study is more in depth towards here whereas the counselor they will study more general like uh, you know uh, Individual support, uh, family education, yeah, uh, group training, uh, you know. So some of them may not be able to handle clinical. So that's the differentiation between counsellor. Okay. Actually, go to the resources that's most available to you. And hopefully, they will channel you correctly. 
for our Buddhist community, please call BGF Counseling Unit. <laughs> I'm not publicity, but it's true. I mean, that's how we train them, right? Our, our phone helper to actually be able to refer. They will do supportive listening, compassionate listening to all the callers, uh, but we have trained them to actually do the, the appropriate referral. But I would say, yeah, uh, if you're not so sure, and of course, sometimes it's also the financial well-being, right? So remember, uh, government appointment can be long, long, yeah? So private practice will be shorter, but of course, uh, you have to pay the fee. So it's also that aspect to consider, right? Yeah. Psychiatrists definitely more expensive than clinical psychologists and counsellor because, of course, uh, if you count the medication. And of course, medical field, their, their fee range is higher. Whereas uh, for clinical psychologists and counsellor, depending on your seniority, yes, more or less, plus minus, yeah, but sometimes we are still clinical psychologists slightly higher because we have to do more assessment. Okay, good question. Okay, so last question because I'm brother Bobby need to close the session, right? Yeah, any last question? No, huh? If we got more questions, tell brother Bobby. We organize another talk a few months later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah. That's why I was saying just now, right? Uh, for caregiving elderly care, that's a huge area, right? Um, <clears throat> August 2nd, or 3rd is a Friday, the retirees can go. I'm actually going to talk about compassion fatigue for caregiver. I've been invited by this uh, private uh, care home, what care con concierge or something like that. So, so it, it's a community talk and the free charges. So I'm going to talk about that uh, topic actually, yeah? So, so, but talks like that, I yep. think, uh, you know, will be probably something that we can, uh, you know, yep. plan yeah, for the elderly care. Both, you know, the caregiver and the care recipients, right? Maybe we should split, or, uh, you know, because caregiver will be quite different roles and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And of course, the care recipient, the mental health of the elderly will be a separate uh, area itself. Good one, Sister Sohun, for highlighting. Yeah, so again, thank you everyone for sharing this Sunday morning with us at BGF. So I hope uh, my sharing has been uh, helpful in different ways to uh, different people in the group this morning. So thank you. <coughs> sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Sister Mian.